Uh, now I'd like to turn to uh, Clark Cooney, Cooney in MMR, uh, who's going to talk about tools. This is his part two of his uh, presentation on tools. So Clark, welcome. I'm here. Uh, I just got kind of a crazy message. Co-host asked you to start your video. I don't have video. <laughs> uh, so let's go to uh, share screen. And so this is uh, Tools with Clark. Uh, we did the first version a little while ago, and this is uh, sort of page number two. So let's go. Uh, for those who haven't, uh, who don't know me, I'm uh, MMR225, as Jim said. Uh, I have been the past NMRA uh, vice president. I've done, I developed a program called Mind of the Masters, which uh, some of you may have, may have taken part in. And I've been in NFR, which is a region, uh, past president a couple of times, president of NMRA Canada, uh, judged um, and done a lot of things. I've even hosted uh, uh, Train Masters TV from Model Railroad Hobbyists and done Model Railroad uh, podcasting regular. And I live in Elliott Lake now, Ontario. I was a paramedic for almost 35 years on the front line in the Toronto area. Uh, where's Elliot Lake? Yeah, well, it's way up here. Um, it's a six hour drive for, from Toronto to Elliot Lake or Chicago, it's 11 hours. If you're going to Detroit, Michigan, it's uh, an eight hour drive. And if you're just going over to Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, which is right here, it's a two and a half hour drive. So let's go. Uh, as I said before, when it comes to model tools, buy well, buy once. And uh, if you buy half decent tools, you won't have to, uh, you know, keep buying them. And that doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of money. And as I said before, if you're a plumber, you have plumber's tools. If you're a woodworker, you have woodworking tools. So if you're a modeler, you have model tools. Uh, let me see. Uh, I got the list of above. Yim, yim. Okay. Uh, if you're using DCC, you should get one of these DCC ramp meters. It is a fantastic tool. You can tell if you got a DC signal, you can tell your voltage. And if you hook it up, you can even see how much amperage you're drawing. When you're using DCC, as probably most of you know, um, people say, well, how much, how many amps do I need on my, for my layout? And the size of the layout really doesn't matter. It's how much amps you're using uh, that uh, dictates if you need a booster or not. All right, so another good, great thing is a little DC cable tester. You can buy these off Amazon for almost nothing, uh, so you can make your own cables. So what's new? Ooh, we got some stuff. Uh, first of all, everybody should have one of these little electrical continuity testers. I use these all the time. There's just a little battery in that red handle and there's a little flashlight bulb. And if you connected the black probe to the, to the tip of the uh, red probe, the light would go on. So it just makes a complete circle. Now that's, you say, well, what can I do in model railroading? Well, if you touch uh, and you make sure your power is off, if you touch it to one rail and to the other rail, it should not light because they should be separated. So if it does light, you have a short somewhere. Uh, it also is great for testing leads and all kinds of things uh, on the model railroad. So very handy little tool and you don't have to spend a lot of money. You can buy them at, uh, at hardware stores even. A paper cutter. Now this, you know, I thought, why would I need a paper cutter? Oh, they're handy as heck. Um, remember when we were doing the paper signs? This is really handy for cutting paper signs. It's also great for cutting... Uh, uh, 5,000 styrene or 10,000 styrene when you're doing windows for buildings. You can just slide it in here, zip that uh, cutter along, and uh, cut out your styrene windows. It's a great little tool for very little money. An angle cutter. Now, these are actually upholstery cutters. They use this, this in the upholstery business. And uh, you can buy them through Micromart. You'll see them at 
uh, shows if one of the tool guys are there, the tool man or the tool lady or whatever the heck the tool person is. And uh, they're not that cheap, but they're, they're really handy. They make cuts really quickly, um, especially if you want to make like a 45 if you're, you know, making a window frame or something and using a very light stock. But these will cut fairly heavy stock. And uh, I use them for quite a few things. Uh, measuring, of course, we gotta have rulers. Um, people say, oh, I don't need a ruler. I just look at it. I don't understand how you do that, but you can do it. Um, so I like the clear ruler when I'm looking through things. Um, they're not good for cutting, obviously. You, they're plastic and you can nick them. And they come in all kinds of scales. And uh, the neat thing is that they're pretty cheap. Um, you can get a little metal ruler, such as the small one, and that's end scale specific, so that's why it's so small. Architectural rule. That is a fantastic uh, ruler. You can buy them at Michael's and so forth, and I use that all the time. Now, if you're into S scale, man, that's your ruler because it's got three sixteenths right on it, and you can you can go and measure all the stuff you want. And uh, of course, you got the general rule, which has a multiple of scales on it. Now. I always say to people, because I've had lots of people complain, oh, Jesus, I cut it a foot long. You look where zero is. The zero is actually a foot from the end. It's not actually at the end. So make sure when you're using your ruler, you'll check to see where the zero is. Uh, simple compass set will speed up repetitive measurements. I use this all the time. Uh, um, and I will measure out what I need to measure once. And then my calipers or compasses are set and I can just keep measuring that same piece constantly. Uh, one of the biggest things in modeling and, and sort of speed is I got a layout to build and uh, I can't be you know measuring every single piece every single time. Use this, you can repeat that, uh, that measurement constantly. Handy clamps as uh, Martin mentioned in his little uh, car building thing clamps are just so fantastic now uh these are uh these little green ones are handy uh these red ones and then a metal one you can see it's all kinds of paint and it's got a curve to it um and uh, you can buy again these at the tool man or at the at the train shows uh for pretty inexpensive uh, the plastic ones are really nice when you're using let's say acid to etch uh, Campbell shingles and stuff for the metal. Um, and you don't have to worry about your, your metal ones going into the acid, you can use the plastic ones. Uh, as Martin mentioned earlier, clamps are just sort of what everybody needs. I love these little quick grips. Um, you can buy them all over the place. Uh, they can, when they're on sale, they're pretty cheap. They're inexpensive now. Somebody said, oh, bar clamps are expensive. Yeah, they are, um, especially for what you get. But boy, they're handy and sometimes are much easier to use than let's say the quick grip. Uh, miniature clothes pegs, go to the dollar store, buy these little miniature clothes pegs. These are like uh, maybe a half inch actually. And I use the clothes pegs for everything. I, I can you know mock up a model I can do all kinds of stuff and they're relative I think you get a hundred of these little miniature ones for you know 59 cents or a dollar so to speak C clamps uh, you know if you have some small ones they're handy too now I don't know if any of you have seen these it's called the right way magnetic clamp they come in uh, a set of two and they're uh, all magnetic pieces. You can see in the photo here is they're held in their, their holder that they've got uh, magnetic pieces. And here here's one that's pulled apart. You can see the magnets here. And the nice thing about these, they have the cutout here and the cutout here so that when they do go into a corner of a building, you can run your uh, styrene glue or whatever you're using and it won't touch the, uh, the uh, model or the uh, magnet. So you can see them in place, they hold it nice and tight and uh, they're, they're really handy um, to use. So uh, another uh, neat tool that you can get in your uh, toolbox. They're not cheap. I think for a pair, they're like about 30 bucks. 
but uh, very handy. Uh, sanding sticks, of course, everybody probably has or familiar with these. Uh, um, you just sort of push down on it, they're spring loaded and you can move the belt around and when you're finished, you can have uh, multiple different little belts. Um, you can see here that these are 80 grit, there's 100 grit, there's, so you can get the different grits for uh, the different work. And these are fantastic for, um, for doing uh, windows and stuff. Now, a little tip, go back to our, those little um, clothes pegs and break one apart. And when you've kind of worn uh, the most majority of the, of the sanding belt and you go to replace it, there'll always usually be two or three spots where they're not, it's not even touched. So cut that little piece, use some contact cement, glue it onto the end of those uh, uh, paper or um, uh, wooden uh, pegs. And then you can use that as a mini filing piece for, uh, for little pieces and it works great. Plastic, if you're cutting heavy styrene, anything like over 60 thou, you don't really wanna use a knife. You wanna get yourself a plastic knife. And what it is, is this big hook. They use this for um, cutting the plastic inserts for ceiling lights and so forth. And you can buy them at hardware stores, Home Depot and stuff, and they're only a couple bucks. So they're really handy for heavier styrene. So you're not trying to push them through it with your uh, X-Acto knife. And again, you just have to score it and break it to, uh, to separate the plastic pieces. A hole punch, they're a great thing to have, you know, for starting little holes and materials or punching out uh, a start for a window, or you can even use this for the four corners of a, of a window if it's large enough. And then you can just take your knife and go to the four corners. Um, also, if you get a big one, a, a big one, a bigger uh, hole series, in these, um, you can use them for making lily pads. What you wanna do is take a piece of 10 thou styrene, paint them green with a little bit of yellow, and then just sit there and punch out your lily pads and you can make all kinds of lily pads and put them in your water scene. Uh, material holders, these things you just can't have enough of because you usually run out of hands. And uh, they're great for doing little electronics projects where you hold that piece and you know you got the solder in one hand and your iron in the other or uh, gluing up little pieces. So these are really good. Make sure they have a nice heavy base. Small scissors, oh, very invaluable for your uh, bench. And uh, I have a variety of them. Um, now the one that uh, is here on the end is actually got curved ones. And you know what they're great for is when you're doing, uh, when you're cutting off shingles off a roof because of the curve, you can only cut off so much of the shingle and keep moving up and you won't uh, cut into the roof material. So that's a, that's a little trick. Uh, somebody mentioned this uh, before, uh, I, I forget, I use these window scrapers all the time. Uh, they come in different styles. Here's one, uh, they just have a straight razor blade in them. And for quick cuts, especially straight cuts, you just have to punch that down, whoop, your cut and you keep on going. Uh, they're also handy, of course, to clean up your piece of glass on your workbench. Uh, etch brass, if you're a brass, brass guy, uh, you wanna get a, uh, some proper tools, um, these little, Zeron pliers are meant for bending brass. And um, I don't know if you can see it in this picture, but they have a very uh, sharp angle here. And then the mating surface is obviously the opposite. It's hollowed out, so it mates. And uh, you can just squeeze them together and it'll bend your uh, small pieces of brass into 90 degrees. Um, the other thing I have, because I, I have done some brass stuff, is I bought one of these little, uh, uh, basically a, a bending press. Um, it's miniature, and you can clamp your material in here, and then you use these pieces. They slide underneath the brass, and you bend it up. Um, I've used it two or three times on some uh, bat, brass, say that five times fast, some uh, brass uh, pieces, very straight bends, you don't get an angle on it. It's worth the money. Um, I got this at a show, but I believe you can find them at uh, Micromart or some other places. But if you go to a show, a lot of the tool guys will have these. 
Of course, uh, Pat, Pat, quick question. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, on, on YouTube, uh, they want to know, do you have an, uh, a list of these tools somewhere? Uh, no. Um, I will compile one and maybe get, uh, get it on the website. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. And to our YouTube listeners, we'll try and help you out. Uh, this, this top one is actually for drilling uh, gas uh, into gas lines. A friend of mine worked for the gas company. They had put it in these little vents sometimes and they use this as a starter. So these are handy. This is a double-ended one. And of course, some of you people have seen one of these. You just push down on it and it spirals down and, and makes the drill. Um, a little tip is to always make sure you put the minimum uh, piece out for the for the job that you're doing. You don't want it, you know, the full length because it's just going to bend and break. So just put out enough that it will go through and or do the job that you're asking it to. The other thing is get yourself a couple pieces of beeswax. Um, you can find this in all kinds of places, especially places that carry uh, airbrushes. They usually have beeswax for sealing the uh, the uh, threading on uh, airbrushes. Get yourself some beeswax, take the drill, drill it into the beeswax. And what that does is as the drill goes into the material, it lets the excess come out of the spirals easier. And uh, it tends not to bind up your little bit as you uh, drill and save on breakage. Now, the other thing is a nibbler. Uh, use this in electronics for cutting boards and other items. I have used this lots uh, for doing all kinds of stuff. Um, it is amazing how much you'll use this little tool. Um, so let's say we want to put a wood door or window in some styrene. Uh, basically, here's your sheet of styrene. Then we make a small hole so that we can put up the, the head of the nib or in through the hole. And uh, then you can see in the uh, first picture, the head of the nibbler is up and all you have to do is squeeze it. Now, it doesn't make a very, it doesn't take a very big bite of material, which is good because um, you have a lot of control. As you can see in the other photo, it only takes like that quarter, uh, it's not even a quarter inch, I would say bite here. And it's maybe a little less than an eighth of, of a in depth. So. You just go around, squeeze that, make your uh, window for your door or your, uh, sorry, you, your window or your door and uh, Bob's your uncle, you're done. And I also use this in wood too. Uh, for scenery, if you've ever uh, put in field grass, you can buy this little uh, tool. You can make one as well. Um, it's sort of got a fork on it and you'll notice that it's kind of, uh, um, oval shape because it holds the material and it's great for planting grass. So you take your field grass, you slide it into that uh, gap and then uh, fold it up around uh, the, the tool itself, hold it with your, with your fingers and then uh, you just drive it down. You can see here, this is that little building that we had. You just drive it down. Now this is styrofoam, but if you've got uh, uh, plaster, you would you would make a little drill hole and then you can continue to, to use the same method. And uh, put a little glue in the hole as you do it. And then uh, your field grass is planted. I take my scissors that we talked about before, cut it, make a little cut. And now you have a nice uh, little field grass sticking up in front of something. Uh, you're never too old for Lego. Woohoo! Um, this is a giant piece of Lego. That's actually the container for Lego. And uh, I didn't have, I thought I had some Lego around, but I couldn't find it. So I ordered a little starter set. And um, it comes in this. And I use it for building molds. And I use it for all kinds of things. Um, you can adjust the size really easy and uh, and make all kinds of different shapes. And because of the different Lego pieces now with the slopes and everything, you can put angles on it and do all kinds of stuff. So here we made a mold, we put it on glass and I poured the plaster in. Now this isn't the same mold, obviously, this one's a little bigger and I have a plaster loading dock. 
Uh, these pallet knives are great for so many applications. Um, I use them a lot and get yourself a good set. The plastic ones are okay, but they tend to break. The metal ones are much better and they're very flexible. You can use this for um, lifting up track and all kinds of things. But I use this a lot in scenery and trying to blend a, a one rock mold to the other rock mold, it works really well. Of course, as somebody we mentioned before, angle blocks and uh, uh, scrap cutoffs, if you can find a machine shop close to your area, just drive over, you know, go around uh, 4 to 30 or so when the guy's about ready to close and say, hey, have you got any scrap pieces? And you know, they go, yeah, sure, how many you want? And uh, they'll give you some aluminum pieces. Now, the two big uh, angle blocks, those are two by twos from uh, Micromart. Um, and I have probably about six of those. I also have some one inch ones of those as well. Um, very handy to use. Uh, earth magnets, I use this a lot. I will put a magnet on each side of two pieces of styrene or something that I want to, uh, uh, that I've glued together to hold it in place. I also use this for uh, making sure that I will put it on one side of the material and it will stick to those angle blocks. Uh, to hold a piece and play. Uh, get yourself one of these universal trucks rather than a standard call it for a Dremel. A Dremel tool, they make life so much easier. You can just screw this on uh, when you go to uh, put a tool in. All you have to do is turn it down. It's like a, a drill truck only on your drill and it's got a three point piece on it and it'll just tighten down onto whatever tool. Makes a heck of a lot easier than trying to get out, find the wrench, undo the collet. Oh, you don't have the right uh, insert in it. Uh, what a nonsense, just buy one of these. <laughs> uh, stretchable wine, these are really great for hydro uh, wines and other applications. Uh, this stuff came from Berkshire Junction. Um, it's actually the same, it's Lycra, and they use it in men's underwear. Um, now, it's very hard to see in the first picture. I've got it strung across the, the two-inch uh, uh, blocks. And in the middle picture, I'm pushing my finger on it. It goes right down on the bottom. And when I release it, it pops right back up. And uh, that would be great, you know, if you got hydro lines and especially if it's in front of a piece of track and you've got operators always trying to reach in, you don't have to worry about the breakage. Okay, here we go. This is one of the greatest tools of all time, but you, it's hard to find them and you gotta make them. <laughs> uh, this is my own chopper saw. It's made out of uh, parts from photocopiers. Uh, a fellow in our area builds them. Uh, he's got a long uh, bed and a short bed, um, and they are fantastic. Um, and I, I bought one off of John a long time ago, and uh, you can see some of the dust and the sawdust is still on this one. Um, and it's got a moving uh, bed in it, so you can uh, do any angle you want. You just uh, loosen that knob, move it around, and uh, it's belt driven and it's really cool. And all you have to do is uh, you got there in the first uh, picture, you got your lever, you just put your finger on it. It's really well balanced. It comes down, chops your wood and you let it go and take your wood out. And uh, it runs when you, it's uh, switch activated so, when it's in the upright position, it's not doing anything. And as soon as you start to come down, it, uh, it comes on. And that's it for tonight. Uh, stay tuned for part three sometime in the future. Hey Clark, fantastic. I really do appreciate you doing this. I know it's a lot of work for you, but thank you so very much.